I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Caroline. I'm so excited to talk with you today. Thanks, Tanya. Thanks for having me. Now, you have a pretty interesting story. So I kind of want you to go back a little bit and tell our listeners sort of how this all began. Well, how far back do you want me to go? (laughs) Uh, Let's go Germany. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I always ask that because I have a lot of different stories and interesting (laughs) stories to tell. And it's, you know, it's been a, a great life. So um, Germany. So I immigrated to the U.S. in 2001, Uh, came from Germany to be here in the U.S. with my husband, Boris, and we've been married for 18 years this year. So so long, long story. We built our life and um, yeah, I mean, really to live the American dream. I arrived having just a couple hundred bucks in my pocket. I sold my car that I had in Germany to be here with him. And um, we started from the ground up, went to school, got our first job, um, and we launched several businesses in 06. We launched his manufacturing company. Um, all the while I was sort of exploring, you know, corporate and, um, you know, thinking I have to make it to my six figure salary in corporate and got to use my MBA the right way. And, and, I, and I did all of that. I just didn't really feel like I was in the right place. And then when I had my boys, things really changed for me in terms of my priorities. And I struggled a lot with just balancing, you know, working and wanting to be successful with being a mom and wanting to be a really good mom. And I never had that uh, growing up. So I'd always promised myself that I would be a really great mom because I didn't have such a great mom, unfortunately. So that that was Um, important and then when I found my boys um, you know I felt they were neglected I put them in daycare and then we had a nanny for a while and I had just tremendous guilt Uh, and 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 that was sort of eating away at me for a long time and then I also had some health issues after I had Matteo my second boy that um, uh, had me really evaluate how I was you know treating myself and my family and everything and then how then I discovered health coaching. I had actually hired a coach for myself to help me with my my issues, and um, had always been looking for sort of my business idea. You know, we, when you don't have an idea, you can't start a business. And for Boris, it was easy because he had that engineering background. But for me, I, I was always looking for something I could do for myself. And um, when I discovered the coaching industry, I was really curious right away because people were you know, working from home, many of them, they seemed to really like what they were doing, helping a lot of people. And back then the market was still relatively new. So uh, not a lot of competition, seemed to have, you know, huge opportunities and tremendous potential. And so I began to dabble in this a little bit on the side while, you know, working and having that, that side hustle going on for probably a good two years experimenting with a lot of health coaching programs and things and branding myself and what every entrepreneur does in the beginning, right? Trying to make it work somehow. And uh, I I was quite successful, I would say, for for being a health coach. Um, And I did leave my my corporate job in 2013. Um, And and then in 2014, so a year and a half later, we we branded the whole business and I went back into... um, business consulting, business coaching, which is really what my background is, what I went to school for and what I do really well. So I left the health piece behind uh, and, and went into to business. And that's where we've been uh, growing ever since, changing niches, changing target markets, expanding, having a whole lot of fun. And 
here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's so great because I think a lot, you know, a lot of our listeners who are, you know, primary caregivers or, I mean, that's always a struggle. And I remember kind of going through that even myself of going, you know, I really want to do this. I really want to be successful in my career. I don't want to give up that part of my personality, right. but I also don't want everything else to suffer. And so you sort of do that, that weird juggling game of guilt. Yeah. And, you know, just launching a business is not going to fix anything, uh, you know. So so if you are in corporate right now or you have a job and you think that the business will give you all of this freedom, it really isn't true because you can still work night and day in your business and still not be with your kids and still not be with your family. So what we do have, though, as business owners is the ability to say no and to say yes and to make our own schedule. But we still have to say no. So I still have to say, I'm gonna stop working at four or whatever, three, because I wanna make dinner when the boys come home so they have a warm meal. Uh, and I have to say that without feeling bad about not working, right? Um, and, and set my own boundaries and, and make my own rules. So there's still, it's a mindset thing, maybe, Tanya, right? Yeah. We still gotta you know, take care of that. So talk to us a little bit about some of the coaching that, that you are doing, because you have a really neat six step, you know, um, process for business scaling. And I think there's a lot of our listeners that are out there that are sort of at that point where they're like, I want something to shift. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're hearing so much these days about like, now's the time, you know? And so talk to us a little bit about your ideas around that. Yeah. You know, I got really tired at, at one point from just experimenting and I felt all I always felt like I'm just throwing things at the wall and I can't find anything that really sticks for me and deep down I knew my business was a bit shaky and um, not standing on solid feet and I am trained based on spreadsheets and PowerPoint presentations and I need my systems I need my steps right so I um I sat down and I began to look at my business like a real business at, at some point and I said, you know, what are actually my key levers? What do I need to focus on in my business to make it grow and to stabilize it? And that's how I came up with these six core areas. And when we went through an optimization um, journey over about a year with my team and we looked at each of these areas with a brand new perspective you know, open to anything new, creative thinking, that's when we found some really cool things that we could implement right away and also over time. And that's when our business grew really fast and we hit the Inc. 5000. So I, I knew if this worked for me, it could work for other people because really a business is a business. Whether you're a coach or whether you're a baker, there are obviously differences, but there's still, you know, the core foundations. So I look at your best buyers and offers, and I rank them on profitability, I rank them on ease of delivery, which means how easy it is for you to actually bring it to the market, um, how fun it is for you, because I think it needs to be fun for you to you know, actually do it, and then how easy it is for you to sell it. So when you have your business and you look at, really what are the, the segments and the buckets of of people, right, that I sell to or businesses, and what am I actually offering them? There might be more than one offer, and you you rank it. You might come up with uh, some really cool combinations, or you might see that something's rising to the top, and and that's where you probably want to focus most on your time on. So, we offer uh, very few things actually. I could be offering all kinds of stuff, and you know, have fifty different things I could sell, but we really only focus on two main. Um, programs that we that we specialize in and and so that that's one the next thing is your messaging so we did a lot of just refining of the message and to your point right now the market has changed but you know buyers have changed what people want to hear not want to hear that has changed so we really looked at how we can much more deeply connect with the audience and also what sets us apart in terms of what the message is out there, the marketing message. So that has a big impact. And then lead gen. I don't know why, but a majority of people who come to me will say, I don't have good quality leads, or I don't have any leads, or it's sort of like up and down, I can't automate it, I spend too much time. So we began to, instead of having these one-off campaigns, we began to really lay out this customer journey. 
right? How do people go through not knowing us to becoming clients and how can we automate the whole thing? So lead gen is a big piece. Um, and then extending customer value. This was so, so interesting because in my, uh, in, in coaching, one of the biggest problems that we face is that we have a leaky business. Most of us, because we get a client, we serve them, we get them results, and then they're out. Right. <laughs> Constant replenishment, right? It's not like other businesses where, where they come back time and time again. Like if you're a restaurant owner, you could have a client for years, forever, until the end of days, right? But for us, it's usually not that way. So when if you're in coaching or consulting or in, or in a service-based business, finding ways to earn more on existing clients is really important so that you depend less on constantly, you know, re filling the bucket at the top. And then two more, and I'm going through this fast and we can dive into any of them more yeah, if you no. want, Tanya. Um, but the, the fifth one is really optimizing our sales process and how much we charge. So for a while, we played this game where we literally increased our pricing by, by a really, really tiny amount. And we kept pushing the envelope to see how far can we actually go until it, we noticed some pushback and some resistance in the market. And then really the, a lot of the growth came from looking at how I was selling my services and building out a really, really strong sales process. So when, when, when it's not lead generation, but once someone is actually ready to potentially buy, what happens from that point on? And who does the selling? So we built out a sales team. We began to measure our metrics and become really smart there. Whereas in the, before that, it was very chaotic to say the least. Uh, and that leads us to the last one, number six, which is uh, your team or our team and um, how we can sort of duplicate ourselves, which is difficult in, in service because we are, we're the service providers, right? We're the experts. People want, want to work with us, or at least we think so. Uh, so I began to hire uh, coaches. Um, I, I began to hire salespeople and then really figure out what does my org chart look like? Who is responsible for what and who do I need without going overboard either? because we want to be profitable, so we can't be uh, overspending. But um, yeah, if you take a year and you make it a project to look at all of these areas creatively and bring your team on board, you're gonna find some really great things that you can put in place to make your business grow, for sure. And I think I really like the last two points because I think there's a lot of people, you know, even myself included that, that struggle with that, you know, that pricing piece, especially if you're a coach or consultant, right? Mm -hmm. the, you know, I, I find that that's the one industry that's undervalues themselves quite a lot of that fear of, well, if I charge too much, then I won't have anybody. And then as well too, when you're in that industry, trying to figure out like, how do I duplicate? Cause, cause all of the knowledge is me. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you handle those, those situations? Yeah, I, I knew that I was repeating myself quite frequently because as a coach, we're a teacher, right? We, we teach a lot and we, we uh, educate as well. So I created a lot of uh, material, self-study material. Uh, anything that, that I would frequently teach clients or provide clients with, I would record. So video content, uh, workbooks, you know, guides, playbooks, templates, and that kind of thing to, to you know, avoid duplication and have people do that on their own time. Um, and and then I hired coaches that could either replace me, but also really supplement my expertise. So learning from me could happen for clients on their own by logging into you know our membership sites and watching videos, and then my coaches would support them you know, with surrounding needs such as their mindset or deeper advertising strategies and maybe sales expertise. So with that, I was able to really remove myself. Obviously, I still play a big role in my business, but um, we were able to, we grew by over 3000%. So it's, it's, it was tremendous in terms of how many more clients you were able to take on by, by doing that. And without, without sacrificing results, really. Um, actually enhancing results and you know I, I at one point I said you know what my coaches are better than me they they literally are better than me better in this better in that and and it really is true I think we have to stop thinking that it's all on us and we have to do it all it's 
you know, we don't have to suffer through this or do it alone. So, um, so yeah, and that's how, uh, how we do it these days and how, how I'm able to, you know, have a, have a great life and lots of flexibility while still having a good size, a great size business. Well, and I think that's a great tip because I think, you know, quite often you find yourself, like you said, in that repetitive thing where, you know, it's different clients, but they're all asking sort of the same question. So I really love that tip of, you know, really start writing those down or start thinking what constantly gets asked me. And then how can I, you know, how can I just make a video on this and be like, yeah, here, watch this. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. And and we did the same thing. uh, And you can come up with great new products too. So I'll give you a completely um, unrelated example, but for my husband, Boris, so he runs a manufacturing company. What prevents him from scaling is his operators need to, to have him be there. How do I make this again? And which tool should I be using? And how do I program the machine? So if he's not there, they won't do it. Right. Right. So that was constantly preventing us from traveling and him, you know, leaving the business and even like growing it more. So about two years ago, we sat down and and we said, we have to fix this. How can we overcome it? And we came up with a software idea that would record and program and replay the entire manufacturing process for for key parts in, in the machine shop. And so we actually, we built the software, we put it into his shop it's working amazingly well and we're going to bring it to market later this year. So with that, you can, you never know what you can create in terms of for the business you have or brand new business or product ideas too. And I love that, that, that out of the box kind of thinking of going, I don't want to be here. So how can I be here without yes. being here? If that yeah. makes sense. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we're, you know, we had touched a couple of times on, you know, we want to set these processes in places because, you know, we, we obviously want, you know, we want our business to grow, but we want our time in the business to lessen because the idea is obviously that, you know, we want to be able to do stuff. We want to be able to, you know, travel and, and just, just even just enjoy life. So talk to us a little bit about some of the creative ideas that you have on how you can start generating some new revenue. Yeah. So there are five ways and now more ways. There are probably who knows how many ways that we can uh, do that, but five specific ways that I always like to recommend to people. And also I'll walk you through them. So number one is um, upsells. That's a really easy one because people always have new needs, new goals, something that comes next. It's just how we are, right? So you could look at the people that you're serving right now and Look at when you depart, when they depart from you or where you bring them to and what additional next level needs they, they may have and how you can fulfill them. Because with that, people stop dropping out of your bucket. You're able to keep them in there or put them into the next bucket and then serve them even more. So you would consider that maybe an upsell or an upgrade or just sort of like a next level um, you know, service offering. The other way is, is possible too, where you downsell people either in the beginning or along the journey or even in the end to something that might be supplementing what they need, right? Um, And and it could be anything. It could be a a plan. It could be a book. It could be um, we have business growth plans that we make for people at a really, really low, low investment. Um, It could be events, anything you, you can think of that is a lesser, you know, price point. Um, but but still sort of fills the gaps and the holes in terms of what people are looking for and, and their needs. Um, the third one is really interesting. What are you doing for free that you can charge for? Even just a little. Even right. just a little. Right, so I just said to you the growth plans. Well, I could be making my growth plans for free or I could be charging a little bit of money for them. Right, once you build up, maybe you're a podcast host, like you know Tanya is and I have a YouTube show. Maybe we do our interviews for free for a while, but eventually maybe we can charge for them, right? So there might be things that you're doing right now that you could be charging, even if it's just a little bit of money for, but maybe they can be volumized. So maybe you can do a lot of them that could be adding revenue to your business. Um, Number four is extension programs. So we have implemented extensions for pretty much all of our services where once people are complete, we put them into a potential extension where they stay with us month to month. This is 
really, really easy. People are looking for maintaining their results, maybe getting to the next level so we extend them. And then five is referral programs and strategic partnerships. And so I'm thinking in terms of who are the key influencers or partners that you can partner with to get referrals from, but also for your clients. If you don't have a client referral program, I think you're missing out big time. This might just be an email. You could be sending an email right now to a client saying, hey, who has a referral for me? And you could have five new clients tomorrow. And then once you automate that a little bit more to make sure that that program is more robust, it's maybe more, you know, it happens on its own, people are notified. Um, you might be surprised how many referrals you can get from, from that source as well. Well, and I think that's a great tip because I think quite often, you know, a lot of people create something, it's really easy for them. So they sort of create it and send it out there without thinking this was really easy for me to do, but that could be a potential, you know, money loss. And I, I really love, you know, the component of thinking like, especially for coaches, you had said earlier too, that a lot of times in that sort of industry, you sort of get them to a point and then, and then sort of send them on their way. So even thinking about, you know, a maintenance piece, I think that's a, a, you know, a really great tip because then that keeps them in. And then if they, you know, hopefully they're growing in their business and then they come back and go, Hey, I I need some more help. We've got this big thing going on. And now you sort of, like you said, you're not, you know, you're, you're blocking the holes from the bottom of the bucket a little bit better. Totally. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, so yeah, for sure. Mm Mm-hmm. So if thinking back to, you know, in your, in your business and in, in your journey, if you can think of like, you know, one example, and I I know as an entrepreneur, there are many, but is there one thing that you're like, you know, I wish I would have known this earlier. I wish I would have learned this lesson a little bit earlier. Hmm. There's a lot. Is there a particular area you're interested in? Mindset. Yeah, I always yeah. just like knowing. Well, I think you know what? Maybe mindset, because I think that's a big one right now for people. Yeah. Well, I think that for me for a long time, I didn't make happiness my number one priority. And I mentioned that in the beginning. I really I sacrificed myself yet again in my business, even though I, I launched a business for the idea of freedom. And I see it in a lot of people who say, you know, I want to make all this money. And I ask them why, right? I want to make a million. Why? Well, because I want to live a really free lifestyle. What that means though, is that you're running a seven figure business, which generally doesn't mean you're working 10 hours a week, except if you're really putting the right people in place. So this idea that there there has to be a balance, but we have to give ourselves permission to have the balance, to stop working, to not take everything you know as, as seriously, just to know that everything's gonna work out over time, things are always working out for me, that kind of thing. That is really important to sustain it, the sustainability. You, mm-hmm. Sorry, did you find that you had you know that mindset of, if I put the work in now and, and oh, you know, almost overwork, then I'll be able to rest later? Because I think course. there's a lot of people who you know, go, well, if, I, if I just put like, 400% in now, then, then later yeah. I'll, I'll have hundred percent rest. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not about how, how fast you can run. It's about, it's really sort of about, you know, how, how much you carry and it's an endurance thing, your business, because you want to ideally have this for a long time and, and have it pay you back for sure. But you know, it's bigger businesses bring bigger problems for sure. That that's just, that's just how it is. So to, you know, running now and thinking that it's going to be so great later, that's that's really not realistic either. You always just do your best and, you know, you, you kind of go with the flow. So not taking it so seriously, looking, you know, long term and, and creating, like demanding the lifestyle you want now without waiting for it. I think that's the key to actually achieving the freedom that you want. And I love that because I think it's so true. If you don't have that now, it's going to be even harder to get later because you almost start the process of programming yourself to work at that level all the time. I have a lot of people that come to me for burnout. So it's very interesting. A lot of uh, clients will say, you know, help me grow my business, help me make more money. And sure, I can do that. But I also have had the pleasure of working with a lot of people that 
you know, if you're looking at them, if you're looking at their business, you see them as, as very happy and very successful, but that's not the truth of what's actually happening. So I wrote a little ebook a while ago. It's, it's all about the eight ways to fall back in love with your business when you feel like you've done it for a couple of years and it's not really, you know, resonating anymore and you're not feeling it anymore and you really don't know where to go and you're feeling burnt out from the running, 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 running all the time. So, um, yeah, just claiming happiness. Claim happiness right now, no matter how much you're earning, no matter, you know, whether you've reached your goal or not, because once you hit your first goal, you have the next one and the next one and the next one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And I think that's, that's, that's so an entrepreneur, right? <laughs> that yeah, totally. We don't even, we don't even finish that first goal and we already have our sight on the second one. So, you know, yeah. you finish it and you're like, yay. Okay. Next. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then doing everything with integrity, you know, and, and not telling people what they want to hear, but really, you know, telling the world what you believe in. That also is really important for you to really love what you do to, you know, be proud of your business, to be proud of your message. And it makes a big difference. People can tell, they can sense, you know, what your intentions are. And, and, and so, and it sets you apart. Then you don't have to worry about being different on purpose or what your competitors are saying, because you're really just saying what you really believe in. And then it feels good and then it makes sense. Yeah, I love that. So tell us a little bit about, you know, if people are interested in working with you, you have a few different ways, like you have some strategy calls and scorecards and webinars. And so tell us a little bit about all of these things. <laughs> yeah, we've created a lot of things over time. But right now, what we uh, are really loving uh, is our scorecard. And it's a really, really simple way for you to analyze your business, actually, in those six areas we talked about today. So it's a quiz. It'll take you about 10 minutes and it'll give you a customized report showing you how you score in those six areas and it'll give you some ideas for what you can do about it on how to make things better, essentially. So um, to grab that, that it's free, it, the uh, link is businessgrowthscorecard.com. Uh, so, so that's one. And then if you want to spend a little bit more time with me, uh, I'd love to invite you to uh, an on-demand training. It's uh, an online webinar. And that's all about our business optimization process and how you can essentially copy our business growth procedure, what to do, the steps to take. And we talked about some of that also today. Uh, it's available on demand at carolinsoldo.com slash optimize. And yeah, if you're ready to jump in, book a call with us. We would love to help you, you know, really dig into your business see what your opportunities are, see what might be blocking you. And if we can help you even better, uh, you can book in on our calendar at carolinsoldo.com slash apply. And um, again, no charge for anything. We're just here to see how we can support you most. So tell us a little bit about your podcast that you have. Yeah, so we call it the Powerhouse Business Show. And it's where I do interviews like you're doing, Tanya. Sometimes I record the episodes myself. It's all about how to grow your business with ease and excellence. It's all about the idea of growing the simplest and fastest way possible. So we talk about pretty much anything, mindset, sales, marketing, lead gen, events. You know, I sort of look around my own business and the world and I, I ask myself every week, what's important right now? My, what do people want to hear about? What can I talk about? And we've we've had the show since 2017, I believe. So there's there's a lot of content on there, and we've grown a lot <laughs> since we started it too. And um, and yeah, it's on YouTube. Simply search for Carolyn Soldo on YouTube, and you'll find it there. Yeah. Um, you had a really great episode just recently I was listening to about branding um, mm -hmm. and it was really interesting with with Henry. So there's I think there's, you know, so much information both there and, you know, and on your website. So we'll make sure that we have all of the links to where where people can can find you. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with us. And I just think there were so many great tips for, you know, entrepreneurs out there to 
take a step back and really rethink, um, is this the right path that they're on? And I love that you, you know, talk about the piece of, you know, making sure that you're having happiness, because that's one thing that, you know, it's, it's on my wall about having fun, or why are you doing it? And that's why it's my tagline, because I spent, spent too many years, I think, in a business that was successful, but did not generate happiness. And I don't think it's worth it. (laughs) No, it's what behind your wall, it says love where you are. Yes. That's perfect. That's exactly <laughs> the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Love where you are. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I look forward to, to continuing to follow you and, and just be inspired by you. Thank you, Tanya. You're awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Carolyn was such a wealth of information, and I'm really looking forward to sharing all of the ways that you can connect with her. So just head over to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca, click on blogs on the left-hand side of the page. You will see this episode and all the ways that you can connect with her, find more information about her program, and maybe even get some freebies. So you're going to want to head there. Next week, I'm really excited to have Victoria Wick. So Victoria went from a penniless immigrant to a successful businesswoman who generated over 500 million in retail sales. She's dealt with the most major retailers from around the world. She's even had her own TV show for 24 years straight, 19 years on HSN and currently on Shop HQ Monthly. And she also wrote a book titled Million Dollar Hobbies, um, which is going to be released in 2022 through a traditional publisher. So you're going to want to check out that too. And she also hosts her own podcast titled The Million Dollar Hobbies. And I sit down and talk with her about how she took her hobby from just that, a hobby, to growing an empire and how you too can start to do that for yourself. It's a really exciting episode and I can't wait for you to listen to that. And then on July 13th, I'm going to be talking with a TV producer, media coach, best-selling author, and a very successful serial entrepreneur. And I'm going to have a free giveaway of a book to every person who listens to that episode. But you're going to have to tune in to figure out how to do it. So make sure that you tune in that week. So July 13th, you're going to want to mark your calendars because it's going to be a very limited time offer. So I wanted to give you the heads up now. Very, very exciting guests coming up. So I can't wait to share them with you guys. So as always, no matter what you're doing, whether you're just sitting on your hands waiting for some free gifts, because we all love free gifts, or whether you are changing your life in a way that you never thought was possible, make sure that you find time to have fun. Because if you're not having fun, why are you doing it?